Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another video using the Winter Wonderland kit from My Porch Prints. As promised, I'm going to do a mixed media uh, video here. I'm going to make a couple journal cards and a belly band. And it's going to be similar to this kind of technique. Let me just dig this out. I made these some time ago. Um, there were completely different, obviously different colors, but we're going to be doing some stenciling with some modeling paste, creating um, some just interesting background, and then we'll have a focal point on the front. So I do want to grab one more thing that I forgot. Just a quick second, guys. Okay, I am back. This is what I was trying to grab. This is just some, um, some paper ruffles, some more of this... Um, stitched paper and some other bits in here so that's what I wanted to grab so let's get going I got my heat tool my very well very well used heat tool um, because we will want to be using that I've got a brush my palette knife this is where my palette knife went and <laughs> the brush uh, when I was looking for it in another video I already had these supplies set aside in preparation for this project so these oh I cut one smaller interesting I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. So one is taller than the other. These are going to be the journaling cards. And this is going to be the belly band. And, oh, I forgot to measure the height of this. That's kind of important. So our journal is eight and a half, so that's going to be fine. Actually, I'm going to trim just a smidge off the end of this, just because I, I don't like to take it that close. So I'm just going to cut off like a quarter of an inch there. So this is just, I believe that this is um, Bristol paper, which is kind of a heavy cardstock kind of paper, and I just sewed it. And I actually was going to prep this today and realized I had a, a piece that I had already done, so I just cut it up and into smaller pieces. So there we go. I need to move this a little bit closer. There we go. Two minutes in and we haven't done anything. <laughs> so I have this new stencil from Tim Holtz that we're going to use. I haven't used it before. Just picked it up this year. And um, I've got some music pages, some dictionary pages, um, a bunch of scraps from my stash, as well as the focal image kinds of papers. I'm going to dig these out really quick. So I've got, similar to the clusters, if you've seen that video, um, we've got some of these little pictures to make into a focal point on each of these. I'm just going to set them out here so we can decide what we want to use. And the rest of them will be just scraps uh, if I need to or want to um, add some into the background because we're going to create a background first. That one's kind of cool. And then uh, I've got one of the little tabbies and then some really little bits. So I'm just going to set this. Some of this needs to be set aside because I don't want it to get wet. I've got some fabric scraps that I stamped on that I might use. A little bit of vellum I'll probably pull from my stash if this isn't enough but it's right here so won't be any interruption for you and so I think we can get going here and I've got some of that 3M masking paper so I'm just going to move some stuff here off of my shelf so that I can reach my drawers for my scraps in case we need those so the first thing we're going to do is start putting down these um, the backgrounds. So I'm just going to line these all up right here. I've got a seam here that's causing a problem, but that's all right. We'll deal with it. So I think I'm going to get my um, fluid matte fluid matte medium. I like it the best for adhering papers. So at least some of them. So I've got that out. And I'm just going to start randomly kind of tearing these. I'm not going to ink everything up like I normally would because it's going to be, it's going to be mostly covered up. So.
Okay, so this is done. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera, or rather, um, just continue on and not risk turning it off and forgetting to turn it back on. But um, let me just show you a close up of each of these and then we'll get them dried. So don't worry about all that, that's going to dry clear. So that is the first one. And this is the other journal card, which I now think I need something up here. So let me just add something really quick here. Just not liking that. Just add a piece of this book page here. Just to add a little interest. There we go. So we will dry that one. And getting all kinds of stickiness. And then this is our belly band. So I'm gonna be right back, guys. Okay, I am back. While I was off camera after I dried these, I did go ahead and do some stitching. So um, I kept with the white thread on this. I am gonna be switching over when I do some more of the ephemera for the journal, for the Winter Wonderland journal. I'm gonna switch back to my brown thread, but this is what I had in the machine and I thought it would be okay for these little cards. So I stitched around. Forgot that they, we need to back these because they're not very, oh no, they're pockets and stuff. So never mind, they're not journal cards. <laughs> this one I just did a zigzag and straight stitch. My machine did not like the glue. As you can see, we got some paper in there. It did, was not happy. <laughs> so I need to be more careful. And then this is the belly band again dried. And I just left these strings on because sometimes I like to leave them. Uh, we'll see if I end up cutting them off or not. I'm not sure. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and just cover up my glue here. And so the next thing that we're gonna do is apply some texture. So um, see which way I want this to go. I want this one to go this way. And then I want this one to go this way, obviously, and this one to go this way. I've got my stencil and I'm going to use um, some modeling paste. This is from the Crafters Workshop, light and fluffy modeling paste. So we will need to dry um, after we do this, but it doesn't take too long. That's really stinking hard. Let me get that out of there. Goodness gracious, that's really, hopefully I've got some that works. Yeah, inside it's good. So, so here we go. We're just going to add some some snowflakes here and there. And the idea here is if, if you guys are going to try this, um, be sure that you, you're just applying a thin layer and that you're getting all the excess off so that there's not hills on the top of, this, on the, top of the um, stencil. It wants, you want it to be really smooth. pretty. When I don't do mixed media, I forget how much I love it. I just really adore, adore it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this upper corner. You don't want it really everywhere. I mean, I suppose if that's what you, you like, you could do that, but it's better if it's just kind of a bit here and there. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to go ahead and um, pause the camera and dry this really quick. And we'll be back. Okay, these are mostly dry. I'm just going to show you a close-up here again of those beautiful snowflakes. They're imperfect, but don't you know, snowflakes are imperfect. And no two are alike, except, except I guess, if it's a stencil. <laughs> but uh, I love the effect. Like, this one's kind of broken, but I love it. And then our last little pocket. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to do some 
we're gonna use some paint. So I want to get, actually, um, yeah, I wanna do the paint first. So the other thing that I have is this Snowfall uh, grit paste. It's gonna look like snow. And this is from Distress. Sorry, that's not focusing. Come on. Doesn't want the up close, so. Um, and, and then I've got this um, iridescent silver fine that we'll probably use to pick up some of the texture on the top. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this Payne's Gray out. I need another brush here, a small kind of ish, smallish brush. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this out on my mat. This is Golden Fluid Acrylic. My favorite, favorite paint is golden, the golden uh, uh, brand. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some water in here. I want this to be really thin. And as you can see, I don't know, I'm gonna move the camera closer so you can see the, the color of that. It's that same blue gray that's in our design. So there it is. Really, really deep and rich color. So hopefully I can get this back, back in position here. I just wanted you guys to see that. Perfect. So, but we want it to be thin because we want it to be transparent. We want to see the color that is um, that is underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spritz this. Not everywhere, but just here and there. I usually go overboard with this, but we'll see how it goes. This uh, paint is really staining, it's really vibrant. But I love the little whoosh I just got to show you again. Watch how it just moves. So beautiful. Okay, these are mostly dried. I'm just gonna give you a close up of what that looks like when it's kind of all dried. And um, it looks a little bit messy right now, but I promise it's gonna be amazing when it's done. So, and the reason why I wanted to do this color first is because I want the snowflake paste, the snowflake uh, stuff to really show up. Um, I, I think it's white. I'm hoping that it's turn, it dries white. I didn't, let me look here. Um, it's, oh, it's translucent, will dry cl with clear glitter. Well, that's okay, that's gonna work out fine. And then there's our, our other journal, um, journal card. I keep calling them a journal card, their pocket. So um, the next thing I wanna do is use a little bit of titanium white golden fluid acrylic um, and do some splattering with white. So I'm just gonna get some out here on my mat. Oh, that was way too much, as is par for the course for me. <laughs> I always put way too much stuff out. So I'm trying to find a brush that will splatter well.
There we go. I think that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, these are dried and I don't remember if I showed you a close up of the splatters, but that's a great effect. Makes it look very snowy and magical. Magical. Okay, so now we're going to do, I wonder what this is. This is icicle crackle paste. Ooh, which one do I want? Maybe I'll do one of each. Maybe I'll do the grit paste on the belly band and we'll do the other one on the uh, pockets. So I'm just gonna open this. I haven't used this yet. So let's see. There we go. I feel good about that. Lovely. I've got a glob there I want to get toned down there. Okay, so let me wipe this off and then we're going to try the other one. So this was the, um, the grit paste that's going to dry. It's a translucent paste. A grit paste, so it has a lot of like, it's got like almost a a por or not a porous, a sandy texture. I've used a product similar to this in the past. Not exactly this one, but let's go ahead and get these over here and we're gonna try the other one. So I'm hoping I can remember which one, which was which when I when I described the video. So beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I could fawn over that all day. So I'm just going to replace my lid and then I'm going to go ahead and dry this and I'll be back with you when it's dry. Okay. These are mostly dry. I am not seeing a lot of crackle and I don't think it's because it's not crackling, but because it is clear. And so I'm debating on doing a raw umber glaze over this so that I can get some of some color into those cracks so that you can see them. So you can see the shine, right? But we can't see really the cracks. So the same with this one. It's a little bit tricky. So I think, and this, this is not quite um, set, but it is getting there. So you can see here, hopefully you guys can see. Camera does not want to focus. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff out for my raw umber glaze really quick. Or actually, maybe we'll do, yep, I do want the raw umber. Hold on. I've got my raw umber fluid acrylic and my glazing medium. I'm just going to put a little bit out here on my mat. And by little, I mean a lot because I always do too much. That's okay. And, uh, oops. Is that not closed? We've got a problem here. Get plugged up a little bit. There we go. So I usually do two parts glazing medium to uh, one part paint. I'm just grabbing another brush part in my reach in front of the camera. And I'm gonna, I'm hoping that this is gonna give me what I want because I really want you guys to see what this texture does. Not on this one, I'm not touching this one. I'm just going to do a glaze over this whole thing. We may not have to do our splatters again, but that's okay. And uh, if you're, you know, kind of screaming at the camera right now, don't worry. If you haven't watched or done mixed media or this process, it can look scary because it looks like I'm painting over everything that I just did. But I promise you it's going to be magical. 
we will probably have to re re-sprinkle our, our white though on this one, but that's okay. So I'm get, just getting raw umber paint everywhere. It's just this really deep and rich brown. It's one of my favorite colors. And I'm just going to get my baby wipe and I'm going to wipe. Looking really dark. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good move or not. We'll find out. It's all an experiment, right? It's okay. It's okay if it doesn't turn out like we want. But our 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 sprinkles definitely do do are gonna need a little bit of help. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this up really quick and get it out of the way. Just gonna dab a bit more just to try to get some of that off. I don't know if we're gonna get any real effect here. But it's okay. Our snowflakes have turned brownish blue. <laughs> so let me just show you a close up. See, we're not getting the crackle. I'm not sure why. I've never used this product before, but I still love that glossy look. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this and I'll be back with you. Okay. So there we go with it. Re I also did, sorry, off camera, I went ahead and did my sprinkles again or my little splatters but I'm just not seeing any cracking and there was no instructions with this product about um, drying time and all of that so but I am not concerned about it. often these products will continue cracking over time um, so we'll see how that goes I need to wipe this up a little bit it's dries me a little bit batty because <laughs> I'm always putting my hands in it and I'm sticking and just that area there. And then I love the contrast of this. So we didn't grunge this up. This is way grungier than I was going for, but it has its own place and, um, and I love it. So, and I love that the strings are discolored here off to the side. And then I love that this one is different. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build our, our, our collage on the top of these. So I've got my vellum, just get these vellum pieces out. And I don't know if I'm actually going to use these. This would actually be really pretty on here. Um, it kind of looks weird though, because it's all cattywampus, but I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. So I'm probably gonna speed through this part. You guys have seen me do collaging before because the video is getting a little bit lengthy and I don't wanna keep you guys too long. So we're gonna go ahead and pick our focal images for each of these pieces. I just love the rabbit, so I think I'm gonna use the rabbit. And then we have the little, how this is a great contrast. Um, I actually think I want the little one though. And then maybe the deer on the other one. This doesn't have a lot of contrast here. Um, let me see if I've got one more that I could pick from here. There's the wolf. That's really beautiful too. Um, let's see, what else do we have? I've got this one as well. I kind of like that one for that, that piece. We've already used the cute little bunny. Actually, the bunny is my favorite though, but we're going to use the deer. So just to be different. So I'm going to go ahead and just prep some, some collage elements here. And I'm just going to um, speed that up. So you won't hear me talking. I won't be doing a voiceover for that. So. Actually, before I start building collage, I think I need to do my silver paint. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get to parts of it 
once I have papers on because I'll, I'll be bumping into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of this out on my mat. This is just a silver, iridescent silver uh, paint, and I'm going to put it all around the edge of this. I just really wanted that silver look this time. And it kind of goes with the snow effect here. It will have to dry again. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just gonna. This is gonna really make that look really um, glistening. The snow that we've got here. Be beautiful. Okay. And then we want some on top of these snowflakes. So this was the whole idea in the first place was to be able to really accentuate that texture, which is why, oh, that got a lot of paint in that one. Bummer. No, it's hard for you guys to see. I'm just trying to, it's going to be hard to tell that they're snowflakes in some cases, but that's okay. We know that they're snowflakes, right? I'm going to try to preserve them and not cover them completely with my focal image. So I think that's beautiful. And we're going to do the same with the, the cards or the pockets rather. I'm going to go all around here. I'm not usually a big fan of silver, but I'll we'll hold these up for you in a second. This is turning out really nice. I love it. This is the look I was going for that's not working as well on the other one. I'm not sure why. But there we go. Got some beautiful highlights on those snowflakes. It's gorgeous. Okay, so that is done. I'm just going to wipe this paint up here because I don't want to get my hand in it. I'm going to show you a close-up. Got so much mess going on here. Oh, the nature of mixed media here. So, let me show you. So, you can see the beautiful way that those snowflakes are being accentuated. Even though we get silver around them, you can it makes them pop, which is really cool. Um, this one's actually trapped underneath that that other medium that we used. So, and then this one as well. Beautiful. And then our little belly band. So now let's go ahead and dry this, and we will finish up. Okay, so that is pretty well dried. So now we can start building our, our cluster. I keep saying that, but we're ready now. So I am debating though about using this. I'm not sure if I can layer it up. Let's see what we had for this one. If we went like that. I just don't want to cover up those beautiful snowflakes. So I'm going to try to be strategic about where this lands. And I've got some scraps of the fab the laces I've been using. So I'm going to just get those out right here right right quick
Okay guys, we are almost done. This is taking way longer than I thought. We were going so well with the first part of the video, but it is okay. Um, as always guys, if the video is too long, you can go ahead and speed me up to, two t uh, to one and a half times the normal speed and um, that helps the video go a little bit faster and you don't miss anything. So I decided on this one, um, oh, let me show you close up. So we've got some lace, accents, and our little house. So that one is done. And then, um, and again, just like many of my other projects, sometimes I will think of something that I wanna add later, like a little bit more lace or lace trim or something. So that's always uh, subject to change. So. Um, I want this, but you know, as this, you can see, this is super narrow. So I'm going to cut this up in pieces and spread it out over the area. And there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the mixed media nature of this project. That was super fun to do. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for coming by, for watching, for supporting the channel and all of those wonderful kind things. Um, as you can see, I have all these bits I didn't use. Um, sometimes they're fitting, sometimes they're not. I might still use this um, on one side of this. It's, the, basically the way they're designed is they can go because there are two layers and it's just a scrap piece of paper I fold in half and then I do some stitching and then I just like attach it to the side of something like so but we'll see I guess you'll see that in the final photos at the end so thank you guys so much for watching bye bye